Item H, adopt resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a construction contract with Rockaway Construction Incorporated for Fire Station 51 accessibility and privacy upgrades project in the amount of $153,690 and approving a construction budget in the amount of $176,743. Shannon. Good evening once again, Mayor and Council. Uh, we're here to uh, talk about a remodel of uh, Station 51 with regards to accessibility and um, privacy upgrades and gender separation. Uh, briefly, uh, Fire Station 51 was constructed, we believe, in 1957, so it's over 50 years old. We've had minimal improvements to this station over the years, um, uh, even though it does hold um, eight firefighters, including um, one battalion chief, two captains, and then five five firefighters. Um, so the, the project itself will be, the, the bulk of the project is to redesign the existing dormitories and bathrooms. But before we, we took that step, we wanted to make sure there wasn't any really significant and pressing seismic deficiencies in the building given its age that would prohibit us from moving forward with the remodel. So in the last year's CIP program, we did have a seismic study for Fire Station 51 that was completed fall of last year. Uh, the building is structurally sound. Um, however, if a large earthquake were to occur, a, a, a quite large one located very nearby, um, we would need some improvements to withstand a quake of that magnitude. So uh, the renovation for that sort of improvement was about $1.3 million. That's more money than we have. Um, and we, it's, that's good to know and good information to have. Um, so w over the long term, we want to, to address that. But in the short term, we do need to address the sort of decrepit situation in the bathroom and, and the, the dormitories. The remodel that we've designed is not expected to impact significantly any future retrofit work that might need to happen. So that's why we recommend moving forward with this, even though um, long term we do want to make some more substantial improvements. A few pictures of those existing conditions. So this is the dormitory. The dormitory is a fairly wide area and um, the beds are separated by essentially cubicle walls. So they don't really provide any um, privacy or sound dampening or, or of that sort. So here's just sort of a couple of um, um, pictures of some, some bunks and the lockers. So it's, you see it's a very open and the, the project will be the exact opposite, is to create six individual rooms within that, that area to provide some sort of privacy. Here are the bathrooms. Um, you can see you know, these are quite old and, um, and a little outdated. You can see some, some rust here at the bottom and in the following slide with the interior of the two showers, you can see sort of the corroding pipes and the, the stalls are uh, seen better days, to put it mildly. Um, so those are the issues that we want to correct. The project scope is, is pretty straightforward. It's uh, first to re remodel the dormitory to have six small individual rooms, um, and then we want to address the bathroom issue. The bathroom is the largest cost driver on this project. Not only do we want to update the fixtures, but we need to provide some gender separation. So California state code and case law dictates that we need to have equal facilitation for both um, female and male fire, firefighters. So the design team worked really hard to create a situation that took the existing small space, split it up evenly, and provided the same number of, of sinks, of toilets, of showers. And we, we did it. Uh, unfortunately, <coughs> and that'll get to my next slide, is that um, it, it does drive the cost up. Routing that plumbing and installing those fixtures is the, the largest piece of the, of the remodel itself. We're also able to add ceiling insulation, which we got for a very, um, very good price. It gets quite hot up there on the second floor dormitory, so adding that insulation should help a little bit. Um, we also want to address um, accessibility features. So when you update a building, if it's within a certain dollar amount, less than approximately $200,000, a piece of that um, renovation needs to go toward making the building more accessible. And although it is a fire station that has to be manned by able-bodied individuals, there is a public access portion that, of the first floor that people need to be able to access. So the accessibility feature um, places a handicap parking stall adjacent to the fire station, as well as creates a curb ramp that eliminates that step that you would uh, encounter if you came from El Camino Real into the front of the fire station. So the project cost is the contract amount uh, is $154,000. We had uh, five bids received 
The really good news is that the lowest bidder is a contractor we have worked with before. They redid Fire Station 52, um, and everyone was quite pleased with that. Um, we had uh, minimal, if, if, if any, uh, cost overruns at all on that project. Um, however, because this is an old building, we don't know what we're exactly going to find, so we are requesting a 15% contingency for a total construction budget of $177,000. Um, well, there'll probably be some, some amount of staff time as well as a new carpeting that needs to go down there for a total expenditure of uh, about $187,000. So those are, and again, the, the biggest driver of this is the, is the, the plumbing portion of it. And that's um, the accessibility uh, as it was a part of it, but really it was a, the need to provide equal facilitation. It's a concrete um, the implementation period will be uh, 45 days of, of construction. Um, those are, that's a, working days, so that's, that's 45 working days, so we're looking at about two and a half months of total construction time. Um, the, uh, once the contract is awarded, Public Works and Fire and Community Development will make sure that all the parties are coordinated so that we can sort of proceed as smoothly as possible. The fire station will remain fully operational at this point, um, much like that it was at uh, 52 re remodel. We stayed open for, for calls during that time. Uh, and then as just a side note, when we are putting in new lighting and new fixtures, they will all be energy efficient, low flow, of course. Um, with that, I'd be um, happy to answer any questions. How many, you mentioned you're replacing showers. What, what are there currently two showers? There are two yeah. showers. We're going from two showers to four showers. Okay. And number of toilets? The number of toilets slash water, water closets is uh, two each. So uh, have we portal. have we looked at? I mean, if, if I understand correctly, we currently have one female firefighter. Correct. And Correct. you're taking. I mean, I've seen that space. It's extremely small. Have we looked at creating unisex space? I mean, and maybe instead of doing four showers, do three that are more functional. Uh, that on the shift when there's not female staff there, you now have three showers that everyone can use. It just seems like it would be so much more functional and it would eliminate so much of your plumbing costs because you're basically putting in two new sewer lines on for the two new showers. You'd only have to do one. You don't have to run four sinks. You'd only need three sinks. I mean, it just cuts everything down by 25 percent and provides you probably more efficiency in use for the department. We, we did look at that option, so we looked at um, maybe like sort of a lockout option. So mm -hmm. we had sort of for, for one side of it, we had um, uh, uh, so, sort of what you described, so reducing the showers by, by one, sort of seeing if we could r r uh, rearrange and then lock out that portion, and when it was available, un unlock that portion. And when we got done and actually put it all on paper, where we had to situate those, those bathrooms, um, those showers, and those, those sinks, we really didn't get to any significant sort of cost savings, and we added it to the operational complexity of the, of the, of the um, bathroom itself. So I, I think I mean, it's something we could we could put it out upper bid and, and see what, what came up. But when we looked at both on paper, I mean, we didn't see a lot of benefit there, even though conceptually um, it seems very reasonable. But when you actually put the pieces on the paper, given the space, um, it doesn't work out as as well as we'd hoped. But certainly, uh, taking in consideration your uh, advisement, uh, will be our intent to sit down next week. Uh, now, uh, the department has the contractor on board, and <coughs> to sit down with uh, uh, the building department and the fire department, and to see if even now any better alternative can be considered now. Do the chair. Councilor um, Medina. You had said this contractor did uh, 50 station 52. <laughs> So I went up to Station 52 to look at their dormitories. Are they in the same, with the noise insulation, with the same type of format that it's up at 52 would be going into 51? Uh, similar, yes. OK. And, and it seemed the, the, the noise control was actually, I was impressed. You wouldn't perceive it, but it, but it was good. Um, the ventilation issue, as far as when the, the heat is on, I think it's a little much in the rooms, but, but that's maybe something that can be looked at for um, 51. You've answered the timeline more or less, and so when you start doing work on the restroom facilities, then what does, the, and the showers and everything else, how are we going to coordinate that? Uh, that'll be a challenge. Um, it, it, it will, uh, I think we've talked to the fire about that and, and the possibility of using um, um, showers at other, lo other locations, at a shower in City Hall, um, 
possibly uh, the, at the, the gym using 52. So I mean, I think there's some options we can get by with um, being able to make do during this time frame. Unless I missed anything, Chief, if you want to. It, it certainly it's not it's not not going to be easy for our firefighters to train this construction period. Certainly. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. I'll just say, and if there's no other comments, it, it's it's overdue. This has been talked about since I got on the council, um, and I appreciate the descriptiveness and the pictures, and you were honest. And uh, I don't know if the pictures do it true justice uh, as far as the rust and the condition. Better than this. Yeah, um, it's something you wouldn't want your anyway. Long <laughs> overdue. Let's get it done. Uh, I'll introduce the resolution. Roll call, please. Councilmember Medina. Aye. Councilmember Ibera. Aye. Councilmember O'Connell. Aye. Vice Mayor Ruane. Aye. Mayor Franzella. Aye.